This is a picture of my final and complete septic system that I actually had to pay attention to. I added, as let's take a trip down from the house. You see a pipe coming out of your house or my house, and then it goes into a septic tank. Mine happens to be a 1,200 gallon tank. The first inlet there, I built and put in a riser. And then the second hole, which is the output of the tank, I put another riser in there. And I'll explain all this as we go so that you can understand your septic system, how it works, and if you have a pump, how that works too and how to fix stuff. Okay, so from the output of the tank, I installed an effluent filter, which you really should have. Uh, but some tanks, like mine, had a little concrete baffle there that I had to adjust, and I'll show you how to do that too. And then the, the last tank over shows my pump chamber where the, the effluent um, output from the main tank drops down into what's called the pump tank. In that tank, there is a pump, and there should be two floats, one for the pump, that will turn the pump on and off as the float rises, and I'll show you that and the technology behind it. Without make, and, but I'll make it simple for you to understand. And then a uh, an alarm float, which when th the water reaches a certain level above the pump float, the alarm that I put on that post that you see there will trigger, and you'll have an audible beep and a little red light will come on so that you know what's going on. From the pump chamber, there's another outlet, and I'll show you how to fix that so you don't have to keep cutting the pipe if you want to, uh, you know, add an alarm or a float or something like that. Um, you want to put a union in, I'll show you that too. So that effluent now goes out to what's called the leaching field. Okay, so stay tuned. Let me go right to... My problem when I first had a problem when my septic or yeah tank overflowed into my front yard, stinky, stinky, stinky. I'll be right back. When my leach field or septic tank, I should say, backed up, and you know when it backs up because your lawn gets soaking wet, and you go outside and you start going. And you say, ooh, that smells like stink from a septic. Well, it is. So when I saw that puddle begin to build, I said, uh-oh, I know I'm going to have a problem. So I went over to where my pump chamber is that I'm showing you here. And I see that the cover itself is cracked that you can see there too. But next to that was an electrical box that goes down into the pump chamber to the pump. As you can see, when I dug around the electrical outlet that is right on the ground, which is stupid to me, the wires are just wrapped around and exposed to the elements, water, snow. So whoever built this system um, originally that put this electrical in there was a moron. That's all I can say. So this is what I was faced with. Now, I was very, very fortunate. I didn't have to spend $20,000 for a new leach field or any of that stuff. I dug this electrical box out. It was on, fastened to a metal bracket. I pulled it up and I shut the power off. That's the first thing you want to do if you're messing with electrical out here at the pump area. So I pulled that up out of the ground and I unwrapped the uh, wiring from around it and I found where a portion of the electrical coming up from the pump was uh, wrapped in electrical tape. So of course I undid that and I discovered, thank God, that it was just a broken wire. Um, it was rotted actually from rust and water. The uh, ground wire was broken right off so no power would be going to the pump at that point so i dug that up and then i decided look if i'm going to do all this work i might as well at least do my septic system right so i'm going to put risers on the tank i'm going to take this 
cover up out of here. And I'm going to put a riser there so that you can just pull the cover, unscrew the cover off a riser, lift it up, and look down into either the tank or your pump chamber. And the electrical needs to be above the ground, elevated, if you will. So I decided, well, I'm going to put a post in there and fasten the electrical to that. I'll show you that next. And because the wiring from the pump up was broken and taped and all that stuff, I didn't have a lot of wiring there to work with. So with the power off, of course, well, anytime you're working on electrical, shut the power off or you will be fried. Anyway, I brought that wire up, cut it. Now, I wanted to elevate the wiring up to the top electrical outlet, which is um, weatherproof. So to do that, I know that I needed to put it inside a PVC piping so that you don't just have loose wires out there where anybody could get electrocuted by it. But the first thing I did was I bought a four by four, four inch by four inch uh, junction box. You see it down at the bottom of this post. Let me talk about the post for a minute. It's a four inch by four inch uh, pressure treated post that you buy it. I bought it at Lowe's for like five bucks. So you put that into the ground first and you know you dig a hole around that and pour in some cement to make sure that that post never moves. That I did. You can see the cement there. Then I added that four inch by four inch electrical box and you got four screws in that cover. So I took the cover off of course and I brought the main electrical wiring from the house that goes down to the pump and then back up to the ground where I just disconnected that stupid electric box that they had in there. And I put the wiring in there, into that little 4x4 four four electrical panel. My hope was to then um, wire or splice that wire and bring the electrical up to where you see that little tester I've got that is illuminated into a uh, two outlet box, a weatherproof box where you just hit, pull the right hand side of that cover, open it up and you can put it almost any size plug in there. And I needed a wide box because on my pump there is called a pump float. The pump float plugs into the electrical outlet first and then the pump wire pump plug, if you will, that goes directly to the pump, plugs into the back of what's called the piggyback float wire. I'll show you all that so you're not going to be confused whatsoever, but here's what happens. The float wire is always in the off position. The pump is plugged into that. Once the float raise, raises up or rises up, it turns the wiring or the circuit on so that the pump comes on and will pump the effluence out to the leach field. Okay, so that's what I needed to do there. I am also going to add an alarm. Later on, you'll see that, what I mean. So the main electrical wire from the bottom 4x4 four four electrical outlet that goes up to the um, weatherproof two outlet box is that straight gray PVC pipe that you see there. To the right hand side and uh, anchored to that same 4x4 four four post is the pump float uh, wire. So you can see it comes out the top which is sealed and then just plugs right into the bottom of the outlet. The top of the outlet where you now see that glowing uh, light, which just proves that I have electric out there. That's where the pump alarm is going to go. Show you what I mean. So let's continue on. You got the basics here. Cement the 4x4 four four post. I hate to be long on this, but I want you to get it. So the 4x4 four four post is in cement. You add then the electrical box on the bottom as low as you can get it to the ground. Make sure that your wiring is coming up through PVC pipes so that it doesn't get rained on, snowed on, or whatever. Um, so let's go to the next phase. And before I go to the actual 
next phase, which will probably be the tank itself, uh, where I had to go find the cover. If a guy comes out to pump out your tank and he has to locate the cover, that costs you extra money. So I wanted to locate the cover, locate both tank covers. And this one here, I just dug it up, but I found that it was busted in two. So I would eventually want to put a riser on this so that I can just at my convenience, anytime I want, look down and make sure the two pump floats or the pump float and the alarm float and the pump itself and everything is cool down there. To lift a heavy concrete block up like this is stupid in my opinion. So you want to be able to add risers to your tank, two of them, and a riser here, which I eventually ended up doing. I'll show you where to get the risers, how much they cost, and all that stuff in case you want to do or duplicate anything that I've done to make your system complete and easily accessible. Be right back. So after I reconnected, if you will, the wiring and made sure that I had power, I went back to my um, circuit breaker control panel, put the power on, and before I would dig up the septic tank covers and find out where they were, I noticed on my bill from having it pumped when I first moved in that the guy, at least on the back of the bill, he wrote down these measurements from the porch. He's got from the house, actually. See to the right hand side there. He's got an arrow from the house to the beginning of the tank is nine feet. Then to the cover was 10 feet. Then to the pump chamber was 16.9 feet from the house. So using those figures, I ended up digging up the and finding, thank God, the uh, tank and then the, the front cover. And it was kind of easy too because it was soaking wet with effluent. So when I dug down, maybe four or five inches there, it doesn't look like it, <clears throat> but I discovered the cover to my tank. See where it's soaking wet there? The cover was actually a round piece of black plastic that if a five pound cat walked on it all by itself, it, the cat would have went right into the tank. So on top of that black plastic thing was a few of these little flat rocks that the guy, that's the guy that pumped it out by the way, instead of telling me, look, put risers in or do something, all he was there for was to pump it. So. He put these flat stones on top of the black plastic thing. And underneath that puddle that you see there is the black round plastic. This maybe an eighth of an inch thick. So I said to myself, self, I got to put a, a, either a concrete cover on here or do something else. So anyway, I dug this up. I took those flat rocks out. I took the black plastic thing out and that exposed the tank. Now that my power was on and I went over to my um, four inch post that I put in and I plugged the pump in to the outlet directly, not through the piggyback pump flow uh, because the the uh, I already knew that the tank itself was totally full. So I had to pump it out. So I pl plugged the pump plug directly into the outlet and here's what happened. Do you hear that down there? See that? That water is being pumped out. Praise the Lord. And do you see that water running from my pipe from the house. Do you see that water running? Do you see that water in the tank shrinking? Do you see that corn? What the heck? I guess corn never dies. So what do I do? I want to put a riser on the, the first inlet of my tank and I also want to put another set of risers onto the second um, cover of my tank 
because in that cover, I'm going to put, or in that side of the tank, which is the outlet to the pump chamber, I want to be able to put an effluent filter in there. When I pulled the cover, the concrete cover off the second uh, outlet in the tank, I looked in there and saw there's no effluent filter. And you really should have an effluent filter in there to filter out the stuff so that basically uh, filtered water is going out into the pump chamber. So what did I do? I searched and searched and searched for risers. I went on YouTube to see how do I install risers and so forth and so on. And then I stumbled across this place, Septic Solutions. I'm a cheap guy. So the best prices you're ever going to find out there is going to be from these people. Plus they had everything I ever needed. The risers, the effluent filters, the alarm, the floats, whatever you need, they have. See, it says shop by department. You would go there, click on that, and it would show alarms, risers, and so forth. So when I clicked on risers, it gives me uh, the following. The first thing you're going to need, or that I needed, was I had a square, I didn't even have a cover. Remember the first one was a round piece of plastic and three little flat rocks? Well, I wanted to put a, uh, a round riser on a basically a square hole on top of the tank. So I dug down around the tank and I uh, decided I'm going to have these things installed. One was the Polylock Square Tank Adapter Ring that you see. $56.50. That you will put on top of the tank right over the square hole because on top of this you're going to insert the next thing. In my case it was a six inch riser. It just slips down into the adapter ring and brings the um, the riser, if you will, cover up six inches high out of off the top of the tank which is what I needed for the first hole to be able to bring it up past the ground level. The third thing I knew I needed would be, in my case, a 24 inch, they sell 20 inch stuff there too, but a 24 inch uh, tank riser lid, 42 bucks. Then what you're going to need, if you put a riser on your first cover or your second cover, it doesn't make any difference, get this kit, it's 1950. In there you'll see the installation kit has tape that you're going to use to seal your adapter ring to the top of the cement um, or concrete septic tank. Then it gives you a drill here, a concrete drill. My tank is concrete. And then it, it gives you anchors, washers, and the nuts that go on these anchors. So, you, so what I did was I inserted the tank riser, and I'll show you that in a minute, on my tank. On, over the uh, the square hole on my tank, inlet number one, and I drilled a hole. There's actually pre-drilled holes, but they're not already drilled all the way through, but you can see them on the outside of this cover going around that, that flat green part. And when you see those holes, just drill holes into that with your cement drill there, and then insert it onto the top of the tank. What I did was I took a black magic marker, a small fine point one, and then with these holes and everything lined up on top of my tank, I marked where I'm going to drill the holes for these lag, concrete lag screws that will secure that uh, adapter ring tight to the tank. So once I did that, I drilled all the holes, I put the little concrete adapters in there, tapped each one in a little bit more with a hammer, and then I put the adapter ring on top of that, and then I put the washers down on top of the adapter ring because the um, concrete fasteners were sticking up through those holes that I already made, and then I put the nuts on there and tighten them down. You don't tighten them till you, you know, because you'll turn the concrete uh, lag screw. <coughs> So you just tighten down, and you can run a run a uh, wrench down. I forget the size, but you'll figure it out. Anyway, so the total cost of this one riser in the tank is $160. They didn't charge me any taxes. So 
and they they don't charge shipping it's free make sure because they give you four or five different shipping things you want it now you want it free you want it UPS you want it overnight make sure you click on the one that says free shipping and you're gonna get it in about four days that's usually what it takes for me to get my shipments so $160 if you only want one riser on your tank <clears throat> and uh, that's so that when you have it pumped out every depends on your family size me it's just me so there would be I would pump it every seven years probably but if you've got a family of four or five kids running around and a wife or whatever you may have to pump it every say three years but you don't want the guy my first guy when he came out to pump he had to bring a backhoe guy that cost me more money to go locate find this <clears throat> tank I had an inspected because I bought the home there <clears throat> So anyway, if you just want to have it pumped and you just want one riser, that's what you need. Me, I wanted the effluent filter in the second tank, as I already said. So I bought another kit, another $160. Remember, $20,000 for a leach field and a failed system. I'd rather spend 500 bucks and do this whole septic thing right, which is what I ended up doing. Now, for my pump chamber, I built a concrete uh, cover for it to replace the broken one. But after a week or so of that, I couldn't sleep at night. I, had, I said I got to be able to look into the pump uh, for a couple of reasons. One is the pump float might fail. Uh, the pump alarm float might stick under something or stick on the wall. I want to be able to look in there and just take nine screws out of the cover and just open it up and look down into the pump chamber. So I ended up buying another adapter ring. I bought a six inch riser and a cover. I did not buy a third set of these installation anchor kits because by, they give you so much of that tape that you're gonna have after two kits. I got more than enough left over and I also have the, the concrete drill. So I didn't have to buy that stuff. I just had to buy anchors. So for $5.98, you can buy a big box of anchors. I'll show you that next um, at Lowe's. So, but I did spend the $56.50, another $42, and another $42 for the cover to finally finish off my three covers for my septic system. Now, whenever I want to have it pumped, I can just pull the cover off, let the guy bring the hose in, pump it out, and I'm done. If I want to check on my filter, which every six months or so, the effluent filter, I'll pull the riser cover number two off, reach down in there, pull the filter out, wash it out with a garden hose, put it back in good for another six months. If I want to look at my pump chamber to make sure the floats are good and make sure my pump is good. And what if you ever have to change the pump? What if the pump goes? Believe me, they'll charge you a million dollars to go change this stuff anyway so that's what I did and I recommend totally septic solutions they were absolutely wonderful they ship when they said they were gonna ship and it was good I don't make any money from these people they don't pay me to advertise for them they don't even know that I'm running this video right now so anyway that's who you want to call and you're gonna get all the stuff you need let me go get that uh, little uh, anchor kit that the uh, concrete lag screws from Lowe's now. I'll just quickly show you that. So anyway, these are the <clears throat> quarter inch by two and a quarter inch concrete lag screws that you buy at Lowe's for, I think it's $5.98, and you get a whole box of them. Um, that's what I used for the pump uh, chamber cover, or riser, I should say. Um, I didn't need the tape and all that other stuff as I already pointed out, but you just put the the lag screw in see the bottom there That's not threaded that goes into the hole that you drill in the concrete and then The riser goes down on top of that or the adapter I should say and These stick up through the adapter holes that you drilled you drop that washer down screw the nut down and then the adapters there ready to 
put the riser in and the riser just goes in with screws. I'll show you that in just a moment. So you can see the top of my tank there, the concrete and the adapter that I dropped on top of the uh, tank and it made the square hole round so that I can build my riser up. You will see the lag screws that uh, I already put in and uh, use the nuts on the lag screw and the washers to uh, secure the adapter to the top of the tank. Underneath, on the bottom side of that adapter, there are round circles. That's where you put the tape. I put my tape way out in the most outer circle possible. And the reason they do that, I guess, is just to seal that so no vapors, no nothing, no water gets in, all that kind of stuff. You want to have it as tight as you can. So that's the first thing I did was the $56.50, whatever it cost, I forget, the riser. Then you see a circle there with screw holes in it. That's where either a 20-inch riser or a 24-inch, in my case, riser, 6-inch tall, will drop right in there, and then you screw the riser down into this adapter. That's next. This happens to be the six inch riser that I put on top of my pump chamber, but you get the idea here. You have the concrete tank there, you have the adapter bolted in, and then the riser just fits in there. And inside the riser, uh, way down the bottom, you see these little round silver things. Those are the screws, nine of them I believe, that will hold the riser firmly to the adapter. On top of this, you see the holes on the very top of the riser. That's where the cover drops on, and you put nine more steel screws that come with them uh, and hold the adapter cover down. So that's how you build a riser on your tank. The next thing I decided to do was move down to tank hole number two and put a riser there because I wanted to add an effluent filter. Let me explain that. So this from Septic Solutions is a complete effluent filter assembly. The black pipe will drop into your tank. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. And the red filter there drops inside the top of that uh, black pipe. And that sets down inside the water. And the water in the tank Instead of going straight out to an outlet pipe to the pump chamber, unfiltered, it rises up through, water seeks its own level, as you know, but it'll go right up through that red filter that's inside the black pipe. And uh, it just, the only thing going out of the black pipe would be, and this red filter would be, water that has been like strained, if you will, so that no gobbly gook gets into the outlet of your septic tank and drops down into a pump tank, assuming you have a pump tank. So that's what an effluent filter looks like. Let me show you what I had to do to install one. Okay, so here's cover number two when I lifted it up. You can see the top of the tank there, and it's a square hole, and I want to make that another round riser coming up to uh, above ground level. But when I looked in the hole, I saw this concrete, it's called the concrete baffle. In the earlier days uh, of septic tanks, when they installed it, mine I think is 20 years old or so, they had a concrete baffle. So what happened, that baffle is supposed to act sort of like a filter because again, water seeks its own level. But notice there's just no filter going through. So whatever comes up into that baffle hole, which goes down about two feet uh, of concrete, poured concrete. Um, that's the outlet over, you could see that PVC white pipe there. That's the outlet going into the pump tank. So from this, the state of Massachusetts where I originally came from, I'm now in North Carolina, uh, Massachusetts is like way ahead of everybody in my opinion. And they require what's called the Title V inspection before you sell a house. They want to make sure that the system is working for the next buyer. 
but they always insist that a an effluent filter goes in here to the outlet of your tank that goes either to a D box or which is a distribution box in case you don't have a pump system and then out to the leach field but I have a pump system you may too that's why I'm elaborating on the pump system in case you do so this goes out to the pump system well I have to modify that concrete in order to fit the effluent filter in there let me show you what I'm talking about so in order to put the effluent filter in I had to break this portion that I'm showing you of the concrete so I have a little five pound hammer, like a small sledgehammer. It took absolutely nothing to just break this concrete out. Notice it's got pebbles and stuff in it. It's, it's not that strong. So you just tap on that and you break that piece out just down to the level of that water, actually the level where you can insert the, uh, that black effluent pipe down into, which I'll show you next. But then if the other end of that will go into an extension that I had to put into that white pipe going over the pump chamber. I'll show you what I mean by that. But to break that down, that little concrete thing down with a little five pound sledge, it's no big deal. Just do it and you'll be fine. You want nothing but nice water, filtered water, not drinkable, but filtered water going out to your pump tank or your D-box. Anything that gets out through the deep box or through this hole to a deep box or a pump chamber, anything that gets out there can clog up your leach field. And when that happens, you're going to be out 10, 15, 20,000 bucks. So it's better to do your system right in the first place. Let's go to the next slide here, if you will. And here briefly, I'm just showing you a uh, picture of the effluent filter that's actually installed into the pipe and going out to either a D-box or a, uh, a septic tank. But I want to show you my actual filter that I installed. This is a picture from Septic Solutions. But I'm going to show you now what my setup actually looks like and how I did it once I broke that concrete baffle away. All right, so this is the setup that I used to put the effluent filter into the second tank hole, you'll notice that the adapter uh, is already on there for the riser. But you leave that off because you're going to reach down into this tank, maybe 10 inches down. Notice that the concrete baffle that was there, I broke it away so that this pipe setup could fit into the outlet pipe to the, uh, to the pump chamber. So the concrete's broken away. Then the next thing I did is... Um, I didn't have enough PVC four inch pipe on the outlet. It only stuck out about a quarter of an inch. So I couldn't put the uh, any adapter or the black effluent pipe onto it uh, or even a four inch piece of pipe. So I had to put something inside the pipe. So I went to Lowe's and $6.98, I bought that adapter that you see over on the left. The bottom end that you're seeing in the actual picture of the concrete baffle with the concrete missing is is how it went in so you take the shallower end or the smaller end of that pvc adapter and you drive it into the outlet pipe at least that's what i had to do the other end of that is a four inch size which is great so then you need a piece of extended pipe to go out to as far as a far out as that black effluent pipe is in my case it might have been six or eight inch pipe so i'm just showing you to the left there <clears throat> you get a piece of four inch pvc put it inside the adapter on one end the other end fits nicely into actually i just put the black adapter pipe onto the white pvc four inch pipe of course i used pvc cement uh in every uh, union or, a, or an adapter or a piece of pipe I use. So that is what the actual effluent filter assembly looks like in my tank when I installed it and removed the concrete out of that baffle. That was the only way to do it. It's great. So that sits now in the water and the water seeks its own level as I pointed out before 
and you just t pull up that red handle and pull the filter out every six months or so. Just look at it. If it's got crap in there, you <clears throat> the way to clean that filter is easy. You just take a garden hose and flush the stuff out over the tank. So whatever goes into the tank goes in the tank, not out all over your lawn to poison your dogs. So that's what my septic tank hole number two going out to the pump chamber looks like now. Didn't cost that much money. The effluent filter, um, I think, I forget, but look it up on uh, Septic Solutions. You need it. All right, so now let's go visit the pump chamber itself. Looking down into the pump chamber, I have a square on top of the, the pump tank. It's very, it's very shallow, the edges. I think it's 23 or 25 inches wide. Down inside that, about a foot down, <clears throat> you see another ledge. That must have been the original tank uh, top. So somebody had put this concrete riser already on just to bring that tank up to ground level. Now down inside that, <clears throat> there was just a pipe going out to my leach field, that white PVC pipe. <clears throat> I forget if it's three inch or what, two inch, I forget. And then that big pipe at the other end uh, goes down, straight down. You can see, I can see the pump and some floats and stuff down in there. Okay, so what I want to show you is this. You go to Lowe's, you buy that little rubber, I think it's a two inch uh, adapter. And then you buy that white union, five or six bucks for the pair of them. And, and I tell you why you do this. You see the pipe at the other end of the white adapter there that looks like it unscrews, which it does. That goes down, that pipe goes down six or eight feet to the pump itself. So I had to pull the pump out to be able to attach float <coughs> um, ties to it. And also I wanted to actually clean the pump and inspect the pump. So it's an 80 pound pump. I'll show you what a typical pump looks like next. But an 80 pound pump, you're not going to pull that baby up by yourself, number one. Number two, it didn't have a, see, an intelligent guy would have put either a wire or a, a nylon rope onto the pump handle. There's always a pump handle. They didn't do that. So I had to pull the uh, I had to cut the pipe way back where that black adapter is with the uh, retainer rings. I had to cut that with a chainsaw to even loosen the pump pipe to pull it up. So then when I pulled the pipe up and the pump, it was very heavy. I had to do it by hand, which is stupid. I'll show you. I did an adapter with a winch onto my lawn tractor. And uh, so pulling the pump up from now on will be real easy. But I had to pull that pump way up out of there. I did attach, once I had the pump out of the pit, <clears throat> I cleaned it with the hose and all that kind of stuff. Cleaned everything. Believe me, it's like brand new down there now. But anyway, after I cleaned it, I attached the uh, nylon rope that you get at Lowe's to the pump handle, and I brought that that uh, nylon rope up to where you see those pump float wires and you see a corroded out outlet box up at the top there of the concrete riser that they put in. <clears throat> That's been dead for years, which is why they put that stupid electrical thing on a little uh, post up outside the ground. In any event, once I pulled it up and cleaned the pump and put the uh, the pump float on, I didn't have an alarm float on there yet, I decided I'm never going to do this again, and you should do what I did, is go get, the now that the pump, the pump outlet pipe to the leach field was cut, I had to adapt the uh, pump pipe itself to that. To do that, I bought the union that I can now unscrew that and it will release that whole thing from the, the pipe. Or I have the option of unscrewing the black retaining ring on the outlet pipe itself 
and moving that back. So I have two options here to remove the pump at any time. The adapter ring makes it a lot easier because now you're not interfering with anything. It's just loosen that up. The pump will drop back. You pull it up and do what you have to do, like a, to, to attach a, an alarm flow, for example, to the pipe. Um, so this is my setup on the pump chamber. This is how uh, I operate from now on. Everything is easy for me. And it will be for you too if you just do a setup like this, assuming you have a pump chamber. If not, you're going to be looking into a D box, which might have six different outlet PVC pipes going to a leach field, or however your setup is. And I just thought I'd show you what the pump itself, a pump, would look like. Notice there's a PVC two inch thing that screws into the bottom of a typical septic tank pump. Off of the top of that, you'll see a chrome handle. That's what you want to attach your nylon rope to, so you can pull this up. And inside that left-hand PVC adapter will be your two or three inch, whatever it is, pipe that's going up to the outlet uh, elbow and out to the leach field. Attached to your pump should be a pump float. That pump float there, I'll show you how that works technically in just a second, but notice that it plugs into a piggyback. The piggyback to the left there plugs in first to your outlet upstairs on the post you put in, and then the pump itself plugs into the back of the piggyback. So that, as I said before, when that gray pump or purple or green, whatever you buy, when the pump float rises up on the pipe that goes up to your outlet, at a certain point. When it rises to a certain level, it triggers the pump to come on and eject any water that's in your pump chamber. All right, a quick lesson on how that pump works. It's tied up on your pump, your, your pump pipe. That's that white thing you see there. That's the pump is below, and this is uh, PVC glued into that pump fitting. Now, up on the pipe, just above the water line in blue, is you'll see that the uh, pump float, which I drew the, the inside guts, the electronics to it. When that lifts up, um, it turns the pump on. When it goes back down, when the water level drops down, it turns the pump off. That's all you really have to know about what a pump float is, except I'm going to give you another illustration right now just to cement this in your brain. And here's the technical end of it. It shows you the pump down in the chamber, and then it shows you the, the zip tie that you put at a certain level called the tether, and it shows you the off position is when the water goes down, and then it shows you the, um, when, the, the, when the pump float itself rises up to a certain tip point, it'll turn the pump on. Notice it shows the piggyback plug over to the left there going into the electric outlet up on the pole. The piggyback plug goes in first, the pump plug plugs into the back of the piggyback, and that's how that works. I'm sure that you get it. But when you make your tie, your zip tie, or clamp, whatever you're going to use to tether, uh, when you figure out your tether location on your pump pipe, then you want it to, at whatever level you want it to rise, you just pull that up, zip tie it right there so that when it rises to that level, the pump will turn on. Okay, next. And I'm just showing you the internal wiring, just so you know how that piggyback plug works. That's the part that goes into your electric outlet first. And it just acts like an on-off switch, that's all. The other end of it, you see it going to the pump float. Um, and to the right there, you see the wire, that three-prong wire in the white one that plugs into the back of the piggyback uh, pump float. All right, so you can zoom in on this if you want to really see how it works, but I think I've explained myself and how this pump float works uh, using that piggyback plug that comes with it. 
Now I'm showing you down inside my pump chamber and to the left on the bottom, you see that's the gray pump float. That's at a certain height in the water. I also bought an alarm um, from Septic Solutions. That was 125 bucks. But you know what? I need to have an alarm. There's no way that you should not have an alarm for if your pump float fails or if your pump fails, and that water rises up, it's going to back up your tank, it's going to come up to your lawn, and you're going to go, uh-oh, now what do I do? Again, with pump chamber and tank risers, I can just unscrew the nine little screws, take the cover off, look down inside, and see what you're seeing with me right now. I can see my adapter going out at the top there uh, through that little black uh, plastic adapter out to the leach field. But down there, you see a green pump float. That's a little different, newer technology. And that rises up past where the pump float would be, like a foot past. Because once it, if my pump float fails, I want my alarm buzzer and my red light outside on the pole to go off so that I know what's going on. Now, let's say your pump float fails and you don't have an alarm float, but you have a riser. You look, take the cover off, you look in there and say, oh, geez, this thing is full. You can take your pump plug and plug it directly into, not the piggyback that goes to that gray float, but you can pump it, you can put that plug directly into your outlet up on the pole, and you'll hear your pump kick on, and you can drain the pump that way until such time as you buy a replacement pump float. In my situation, I want both the pump float and which came with my system, by the way. <clears throat> but I wanted that new alarm system uh, on top of my pole out back, and I'll show you that shortly. I know this is long winded, but you know, I'm trying to teach you everything there is to know about your septic system, how to do it right to save yourself a lot of aggravation and expense later on down the turnpike. If your pumper comes out and he pulls the first tank cover up, and the second one, the riser cover, then he could just pump that all the way down to the sludge that's this thick in the bottom of your tank, or thicker, depending on the size of your family. He can also pull the riser on the pump chamber, this one, and stick the hose down there and pump that out to the bottom too and pump. There's always sludge somewhere along the line. It, it's not rocks or pebbles or whatever, it's just sludge gets through. That's what you don't want coming up through your pump. Um, so <clears throat> with risers and covers, you can easily get it pumped out. And it's cheaper. They don't have to find your tank. You don't have to find your pump chamber. They don't have to bring a backhoe out like my guy did and charge an extra fee to have that guy there. It's just all done. And then you can landscape it to your heart's content afterwards and make it look nice. Be right back. Okay, I wanted to show you real quick, like when I uh, ended up pulling that pump up, I want to just show you where you're going to tie your pump float to. Um, this is where it was tied, and notice that I actually had to adjust that because this is part of the pump not turning on or turning off. Um, so 10 inches above your pump is where you want that pump float to have this much travel of, of electric wire coming out of it. Notice that the, the metal clamp securing that in place, it's just like too tight. It's going to either hit the pump or it's going to come up and hit the clamp or it's got no room to travel. So you want, however, if you want it a foot above your pump, then make that pump float wire, the black wire going up to your post junction box, make sure that that's where you want it set. And you can put a clamp, like a metal clamp like that, or a zip tie. I happen to use both. But I did adjust this pump float so that there's that much, you know, 10 inches of, of uh, wire so that it can travel up and turn the pump on or off. Okay. Just thought I'd throw this in. This is actually looking into the pump chamber and the uh, regular pump float 
I did this on purpose. I filled it full of water from my hose, but I wanted to test my alarm, the green float. Once that goes straight up, it will trigger the alarm. You get how that works now? But you can't see my pump float because I intentionally unplugged it and filled it the uh, pump chamber up to where I could test my alarm float. That's the alarm float there, and sure enough, the alarm went off, so everything was cool. And once all of that jazz was done, again, here's a picture of the adapter that I actually put on my pump chamber and the concrete apron that I actually had to make around that so that I could bolt down the adapter. And then there's a riser that goes into the adapter housing. Show you that next. And again, this riser is of the main tank uh, input um, that I showed you way at the beginning. But I just want to show you again what a riser, this one happens to be a six inch riser, will look like inside the adapter. To put the adapter down, you see that concrete cover? I actually made that, but it's too heavy to lift up. The thing weighs like 80 pounds. This is on my pump chamber. So what I did was I left that cover on there and right where it sits on the concrete riser that the original people put in, I had to make it wide enough to, at the top of that of the uh, concrete riser and just below this cover that's, that it sits onto, um, I had to pour concrete and then smooth it out with my trowel and so forth so I could place the adapter, which is larger than the square hole to the pump chamber. And that's why I put the concrete apron in there. And uh, then I ordered the riser and the adapter and the cover for this. And I take that big, uh, heavy, stupid concrete cover that I made up so that I never have to do this again. Never. I'll show you uh, quickly how I lift that cover and how you could do it if you want to keep going back lifting covers. What I do to lift a cover up in the first place, or pull the pump up if you want to, is I went to Harbor Freight, and I think it was 75 bucks, I bought that 2,000 pound winch. It comes with a little adapter that goes on a trailer ball. Well, I made that adapter, I bolted it to my tractor fender right there, and then I put the winch on top of that, and then I went down to Lowe's and bought a bar, a, a steel bar, two feet long, because when I back the tractor up over the tank cover, I want to be able to pull it up with the hook. Notice the hook coming out of the winch for a boat. And then I bought a pulley. I think it was five or six dollars. You can mount it vertically or horizontally. I wanted to mount it vertically onto that bar. Now, all I do is pull the winch cable out, drop it over the pulley so that I can pull things straight up off the septic tank or in this case the uh, pump cover. It's going to be a one-time deal because again I put the riser in there. But this kind of a setup is good for anything, hauling logs, whatever you want to do. Um, underneath that bar which would bounce up and down if I, if I let it, it's uh, an eighth of an inch thick but it's not thick enough to pull a heavy 80 pound cover straight up. So underneath that, I actually tuck a stronger portable metal uh, piece and that gives it the strength to pull that up. So anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in. With this, I actually can wrap that cable around logs out back and bring it up to a fire pit or whatever. So it's a handy dandy little thing to have for a fairly cheap money. And just wrapping this up, I just wanted to show you a quick picture of the original pump chamber cover that when I looked at it, when I dug it up, it was busted in two. So it was no good in the first place. So here was septic riser and cover number one from the tank. So again, if the guy, the pumper comes out, boom, unscrew nine screws, pull the cover off. There's two little handles to lift it up. <clears throat> and you're looking into the pump, uh, into the tank, uh, where it outlets from your house. Then the second one down, I put a riser on. That was a 12-inch riser, by the way, because the tank was 
like down and the ground was up, whatever. But I needed a 12 inch riser there, but I wanted to make everything look level at the ground level. So that's what I did. <clears throat> Further down, you could see where I was working on the pump chamber, which is where my four inch post and electrical is, the union box, and the alarm is on top of that, which I'll show you in just a moment. I'm going to show you some options here for decorating the ground once you do all the work and put the risers in. Option two is what I actually did. I went to Lowe's and bought a can of $4.98 satin brown to match my mulch. I actually put the edging in. Uh, this is actually done. Um, the flowers aren't there yet. My post is there, as you can see, and the alarm at the very top is there. I put a little brass or copper top on the post and you can put flowers around your uh, riser cover or whatever you want to do but I painted them brown just to match. I didn't like the green thing but again use your head you can do whatever you want to make it look good. And I did want to leave you with what my alarm from uh, Septic Solutions looks like. That's on the very top there. Then uh, you can see the PVC where the wires are coming up to the electrical outlet from the junction box down below. That's where my pump float and pump plug plug into. On the top where that little yellow thing is, is where my alarm now is plugged into, just so you know. So in wrapping this up, here's another alternative you could do. Leave the covers green elevate them up above your lawn is my uh, idea for the it's a Photoshop of the first tank cover the second tank cover where the filter is the pump access cover the post and you can even put a light on the top if you want instead of I put a little bronze thing or copper top up there but this is my actual yard so that's what you can do easy access to your septic system